All right, guys, we're going to take a look at every mechanic should know video here. And I understand that when I talk about this, sometimes it kind of gets people a little, you know, uncomfortable. And there's, you know, there's so many reasons that a bolt could be a problem. But we're just going to focus on us in our training and how important torquing procedures and what we do are. We're pulling the shovel head apart. And if you've never done this before, what you do is you're taking the whole head and rocker assembly off as a set, and there's not much room to work, okay? So get in here so you can kind of see some of this. So we got to get in here. We actually have to pull the head bolts out, and you take this whole thing off as assembly, okay? So you're working upside down, right? Are you with me, honest? And it's just so important that these are assembled properly. Now, the argument is going to be this. This is a, this is a shovel head, right? It's a 1982. So when you look at this bike and if you think, oh, that thing's, you know, it's old, it's rusty, you got rusty nuts and bolts, I'd be perfectly fine with that if this was this difficult, if it hadn't just been rebuilt when it got parked, okay? That's the struggle I have. It should not be this hard to get this apart to where we're starting to ruin stuff. So the other thing I want you to focus in on is when we talk about fasteners, we talk about the fact that we have a 12-point um, or we have a six point and most all the fasteners that we deal with not all but a majority of them are a six point fastener Harley does use a lot of 12s on brakes and things like that so would you bet that it's probably pretty common to take this 12 point and go upside down and try and take this off okay well we start do that and these bolts were they weren't happy with us they they did not like the fitment and that little play that's in here when i say little do you see how loose that is this is a non-damaged bolt come here and look at this get tight on this you guys this is non-damaged okay when i put a six point i was lucky i had had one of these when i put this on here okay i've got about that much play there's still some but it's it's less are you with me and you know it, it, it brand does I'm you know not super worried about this this is some generic import or whatnot but so we start to take a look at this and I'm telling you I'll take one of these here like we haven't messed with this one yet so I'm gonna go ahead and I want to crack this one loose the, the problem that we have is this needs to be fully supported in here you getting close on that okay if I let this drop down What's going to happen is I'm only going to be on maybe 50% of the real estate that faster and we're going to really start to have a bad day. If I strip any of these, what do I have to do to fix it? Tap. Oh, how are you going to get a tap in there? Oh, uh, then you got to cut it off and then you got to take the heads off and yeah. probably get new heads if you don't tap it. There's probably a good chance I'm going to pull the motor so I can move this to a position that's easier to cut it off with a torch or grind it off. It's going to be a long undesirable day. So I want you to notice something about these wrenches that we've talked about is there's an offset on this. This here is flat and this here has this offset. So right away that gives me a clue that when I install it on a bolt, okay, it should be pointing down so that I have that correct offset and I can hopefully grab this and go ahead and move it. Do you see where I'm supporting the wrench from underneath? Okay, I'm going to try something else too. I'm going to try a different position and see if I could get one more bite out of it. Okay, I got one more bite. Do you see where my bot back up to show my body angle? Do you see how I'm, I'm gonna be able to pull on it better? Yep. Are you with me on that? Okay, it, when I pull on this, do you see how I'm wanting to lift up by my natural tendency? I have to be intentional to keep this angle here and then try and pull this. Now, I'm not having any luck. This thing is on here tight. So one of the other tricks would be to simply do something like this take a wrench through here, void all possible warranties whatsoever, and I'm going to take this now, okay, and I'm going to pull it this way. You see how that's bending the wrench? How tight these are in here? I think these were grossly over tight, okay? So I, I was able to do this, and I, I didn't feel like it was going to strip, and that's how you'd use those two wrenches, okay, to take something off. But it, what I'd rather do is I'd rather violate, you know, some wrench like this. I'd rather be on a six point. And you see how I kind of get some different opportunities here with this angle? I'm gonna get this up here really tight. And then what I had Alex do, hop on this side, is he even put some pressure here underneath like this to, to keep the wrench from wanting to walk down. 
okay? So it's just, we had a better lip on the other side. But then what I could do is I could take this, you notice I just got a big piece of flat channel? I wanna try and go all the way down as much as I can, and now I can take this and get it loose. Okay, I'm done, pull the wrench out. Okay, we're just on kissing ease at this point, trying to do it in a star pattern, but man, I'll tell you, I don't know, where you sweat bolts a little bit? Yeah. We've got this one faster on the other side that it was wanting to strip. We can try to, just to shock it loose, this was another thing we did, is we came under here, got this in place, this would definitely be a really good chance you break that universal joint, stuff could go flying. This is nothing desirable. This is like emergency save the day. <laughs> but what we were trying, we were hoping would happen is that, you know, this has been either sitting there for a long time or it's over tightened or it's got way too much Loctite. There's something going on here. And we wanted to use the impact action of the impact to hammer that bolt. And I'll, I'll go ahead, well this one's loose now, that won't do any good. Uh, I wanted to use the impact of this basically banging on that bolt because I can't get to it with a hammer from another angle. You see the couple different techniques that we can have? Man, I'll tell you what, I just want to say good job, we got it. We're going to be able to keep moving forward on this without having to pull the engine or cut stuff off. Uh, I feel like by faith that we'll be able to do the rest of these fasteners. Let me ask you guys something, as far as an entry level tech, and you ha haven't done a lot of this, I even wanted extra help. I wanted the support by the pry bar underneath that. What do you think you guys got to be thinking about when you go to work? Hey, uh, ask for help. Ask for help. When you get into this trouble stuff, get a second brain on it, get a second opinion, get a, you know, get someone that's uh, been at that craft for a long time so that we can prevent from just ripping stuff off. I will tell you this right now. Had Mr. Alex here, Mr. Bailey, not stopped, not created that pausable moment. What do we call that? One what? 140. That 140 moment. And had he kept using this 12 point wrench, he would have rounded that off and we oh, we would just be hating things right now. No big deal, That's I mean, that's learning. That's why we're here, we're learning. But I just want to thank you for stopping and asking. Make sense? All right. I've talked about this in a few different videos about that stoppable moment, that moment where you need to pause and reflect and say, is this the best thing that I should do right now? Or should I get help? And it is absolutely the hardest thing to teach, I would say, an entry-level technician, because uh, they just haven't made those mistakes. They just don't know the risk or the cost. And, well, if I keep going, it'll be all right. This is what you're supposed to do kind of thing. It's, it's really to no fault. But one thing I really want to encourage uh, anybody, uh, a seasoned tech, an entry level tech, and I have to remind myself, is simply just to pause. And my best advice on that is, is just this. When things aren't going right, the moment that the intentional move you're making is not seeming to work or go right, that's where you need to pause readjust possibly, reflect, consider options, things like that. And and the thing is, if you're going 100 mile an hour, you're, it's really hard that the moment that little move you make is going to be disastrous, it's going to happen really quick. I mean, sometimes when we do certain types of mechanics, we just need to slow down. We need to go, hey, there could be problems here. And I know that takes time, I kind of repeat myself here, but it's really just the point I want to stress is that we need to think about uh, those opportunities, if you will, to just slow down, look at the process we're going to use and go, well, this is risky, I'm going to approach this a little bit slower and then uh, have much more success. Because I'll tell you what, Alex here, what a great job of just stopping and knowing when to ask for help. Uh, that pausable moment that he stopped literally, listen to me this, literally saved, I mean, 8, 10, 12 hours worth of labor. I, probably even more than that. I mean, th this one would have sucked. So great job. Keep learning. Keep wrenching. Have a great day.